Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Haley and this is The House for Hosting. If you're new here, I generally upload on every Tuesday, but this week got a little off track because Tuesday was our youngest daughter's birthday, so we spent the day celebrating her. But I'm so happy that I can finally share the video with y'all from her birthday party. She had a pink theme party, and so I just wanna show all the decorations and the food that I made and show you how you can do this simple um, party as well. It turned out to be super cute and a lot of fun. So I just wanna jump right in and kinda talk about the decorations. This is a tassel garland that I made out of tablecloths. I used tablecloths, twine, and scissors to cut into strips and then tied them on the twine to make them hang. She was doing a paint theme party which was kind of like rainbow colors. So I chose to do various colors on the garlands and I made them in separate sections so that I could tie them together but also maybe for other parties or other events have separately if I wanted to. All in all, it didn't take too terribly long. And when I got it down, you know, on how I was going to make it and how I wanted to do it, I had it kind of figured out. But basically, you just cut them and tied them onto the twine like this. And like I said, I did several colors to make it look like a rainbow. And then they were just kind of flowy, and I hung them in our kitchen. I actually decided to hang these where I would normally hang the balloon garland because. If you stick around, you will see I had a different plan for the balloon garland this year, which turned out pretty cute too. So I love DIY and I love crafting. And so anytime that my kids have birthday parties or events and I can make the decorations, I always opt to do that. And this was something that I found on Pinterest and I thought was very cute and I thought, you know, it couldn't be that hard. So I did it myself and they turned out super cute. You'll see in a moment, I'll have a picture of where I hung them. And I decided to incorporate like alternate balloon colors where the tassels tied together just to give it more of a colorful look because again, we were going for like a rainbow colored paint theme party. I loved this so much. Once I got it done and I saw the colors together, it turned out perfect. It was everything that I could have imagined. So I can't wait to see or show you how it looked whenever it was hung, but they were super cute. And I couldn't believe that they came from tablecloths. So I got the tablecloths from the Dollar Store, like I think Dollar General, not Dollar Tree, because FYI, they've gone up to $1.25 now. And I got these from the Dollar General for an actual dollar a piece. So you can't beat that on party decorations. The tablecloths were a dollar and the twine was just probably a couple dollars. And so really it just took the time of cutting them. I would say definitely invest in the rolling scissors that look like pizza cutters because that made it so much easier to cut into strips so that I could have the actual tassels to tie on there. And then for hanging, I'm using a hammer and thumbtacks to kind of hang it up here on the ceiling. And this is generally where I would put my balloon garland, but again, I had another plan for that one for this party, but they looked really good hanging between the kitchen and the living room. So for the next party decoration, I had an idea for my balloon garland. I wanted to hang it in a way that made it look like it was paint falling out of a large paint bucket. So I went to Lowe's and I bought me a five gallon paint bucket and I spray painted it with a silver metallic spray paint to give the bucket a look of like a large paint can. And you will see later how I hung it and where I hung it at to make the balloon garland look like paint falling out. But spray paint is your best friend when you're doing any type of craft or DIY project. It's super cheap and I love how it can transform anything. So it took this five gallon bucket from just plain or regular bucket to completely looking like a paint can. It turned out so good and it was so cute.
Now for the actual balloon garland. Again, she was having a paint theme party, but it was rainbow colors. So I ordered a balloon garland kit off of Amazon, which I do have linked in the description of this video. And I did rainbow colors, but when I assembled them, I didn't want to just mix it up. I wanted it to specifically look like the rainbow. So it was like it was pouring rainbow out of the paint bucket. So I also use an electric pump, which I do have linked. I believe it's like 17 or $18 off of Amazon. It might be 20 now, not much. But honestly, if you ever make balloon garlands, I highly suggest investing in one because years ago I would use a manual pump to blow these up and it would take me forever to blow up all the balloons. And now that I have an electric air pump, I can blow these up much faster. It still takes some time to blow them up and time and put them on the tape that comes with your kits, but it's nothing in comparison to having the manual pump. And then what I chose to use to give my balloon garland the arch so it would actually look like paint kind of pouring out of the bucket was a pool noodle. I went back to the Dollar Tree and hit them up and found this purple pool noodle, which turned out to be perfect because it hid very well. And then I used fish and line to tie the garland around the full noodle so that I could arch it and hang it. I left a little section of the full noodle hanging out from the garland and I actually duct taped that inside the paint or the five gallon bucket. We're calling it a paint bucket because that's that's what it's turned into. So I used the duct tape to paint no I used the duct tape to tape the pool noodle in the bucket. I'll get it out eventually y'all you know what I'm trying to say. And then for an added extra support, I took my fishing line and I attached a little top section of the garland to the actual curtain rod. Because the balloon garland was a little heavy, the duct tape was pretty strong and secure and I just felt like the fishing line was just a little bit of extra support that it needed and it also kind of helped give it more of that arch look, which you'll see in the next picture. But I love how it turned out. It was so cute and everyone loved it. So I love hanging banners over the fireplace and anytime we have a birthday party, I love a banner that will say my child's name. And I had the idea to use this Cricut and create a name banner that looked like many paint palettes and various colors of paint splatter. And then I spelled out her name and you'll see I ended up using for one of the letters, I used a paintbrush. So it turned out really cute. Now. This is not my Cricut, this is my mother's. I do not have one, but she does, and she let me use it to make the banner. So I didn't have to order one offline, but I know there are tons of awesome Etsy shops and even on Amazon where you can purchase name banners and things like this, but it was fun to make one individually. Again, what I did was I cut it out on the Cricut and I took, well, I tried it first with the hot glue, but it really wasn't sticking because of the glitter paper. So I pulled out my handy dandy Mod Podge and Mod Podged all the letters and splatters onto the easels or the paint palettes, excuse me. And then after I finished doing all of the letters, I took a um, hole puncher. I'm having trouble with my words today. <laughs> I took a hole puncher and I punched holes at the top of them and strung two separate colored ribbons. I did like a rainbow colored and then um, I think it was a pink colored ribbon through the top of them to hang it and again it turned out cute I really love for her eye I used the paintbrush so just try to get creative and add you know her name in since it was her birthday party but this is where we did the gifts so it was the perfect setup moving on to another easy decoration was this life-size paintbrush using a broom a pool noodle and some aluminum foil so I actually got this idea at, from VBS this year. We had like a craft themed VBS and they had this and I thought it was so cute and so easy. I picked up another pool noodle and I just slid the broom down into the pool noodle and then I took the aluminum foil and kind of wrapped it where the broom and the pool noodle met to give it that look like the paintbrush. 
and then I trimmed the pool noodle down so that it wasn't super long. The kids loved this because they liked that it was like a life-size paintbrush and they enjoyed playing with it, but it was just one of those sit around extra pieces of decorations that was super easy, didn't take me hardly any time to make and didn't cost me anything. So I think this decoration piece was probably one of my favorites. I went to Lowe's and I bought these gallon sized paint buckets and I painted around the edges to give it the look of paint pouring out of the bucket. And then I went to Kroger and I picked up flowers the night before the party. And I love that they always have these bouquets. Y'all, I'm terrible about the names of flowers. Like I know what the baby's breath is, but the rest of it, I honestly couldn't tell you. But they always had these colorful bouquets and I just, when I had this idea to do these centerpieces, those flowers came to mind and they were perfect. The colors matched so good. So I prepared these centerpieces for the tables. We had a main table inside where everyone ate and that's where I added an extra topper in the centerpiece and then the other two went outside. Because this was a painting party, we actually had like canvases and aprons for the kids to paint. So I wanted to set up the tables outside super cute, which you will see here in a minute. But I love making flower arrangements. I actually made the um, flower arrangements for my wedding and my sister's wedding, and it's fun to me. I enjoy doing it. I'm definitely not a professional, but I love a good DIY. And so this one right here was the one that stayed inside, and I got that five. It's actually a cake topper. I got it from Hobby Lobby. And then these were the ones that went on the tables outside where they painted. But they turned out so good and they were so pretty. So not only did I make a lot of decorations for the birthday party, but I also made the cake and cookies and all the food. Now I always do the cakes for my children's birthday parties unless they do an ice cream cake because I cannot do that. But for the most part, when it comes to the birthday cakes, I've been making those since they were very little, even like the first birthday smash cakes. I enjoy making cakes. I think it's fun. I will say as they've gotten older, the demands have gotten a little bit harder. And I'm not a professional. I'm a true DIYer. So I just did my best. But this one, I got the idea off of a picture from Amazon when I was ordering the cake topper. So I wanted the cake to look like a color palette and then I did like the different color icings on the top to replicate like the paint on the color palette and then I bought the cake topper off Amazon which I have linked in the description as well. So I love when I can pull out my KitchenAid mixer and use it for my cakes. My husband bought me this a few years ago and I use it anytime I'm baking a cake or at Christmas time or around Thanksgiving. It is pretty heavy, so I don't sit it out on the counter all the time, but for special occasions like this, I like to pull it out, and I love it when I get to use it. So a little tip whenever you are baking a cake, if you will spray the pan and then sprinkle flour on it, this will help the cake not stick so that whenever it comes out and you wanna decorate it, you can dump it out on the pan and it comes out in one solid piece. Another tip is I always buy the cheapest box cake mix. I think this was the Walmart brand for like 98 cents. And then I add to it that makes it a lot better. You can add sour cream, which I have done. It makes it more dense. And then I always add more oil than what it calls for. And you can also add an extra egg. So those are just some tricks that I've learned over the years. The way you can kind of dress up the box mix without spending extra money on the ones that are a little bit more expensive, I just take the one that's cheap and I make it good and my cakes always taste great. Also, you can freeze your cakes and after you freeze them, this helps them become um, not so dry as well.
so to start I cut my cake in the shape that I wanted again I was doing the color palette so I cut a little notch out of it to give it that look and then I cover the cake with a thin layer of icing and I call this the crumb coat and basically what it does is it acts like a glue to seal all those loose crumbs on the cake so that when you do the main layer of icing you don't have any crumbs in it and this makes that process so much easier a lot of times I struggle with the final layer of icing getting it perfectly smooth and over the years I have just come to the conclusion that I'm not a professional cake decorator and I do my best and my kids are always happy so I don't spend as many hours stressing that process as I used to and I always add things to it so it usually doesn't matter anyways if it's not perfectly smooth for instance you'll see here I ended up covering the sides and sprinkles and then I always add something to the top so even if it's not perfectly smooth they still look great and they taste really good now the icing that I'm using as far as the main icing goes I actually got from the bakery at Kroger I don't know if you know this, but you can go to the bakery at Kroger and you can ask to buy the actual whipped icing that they use on their cakes. And it's actually a lot cheaper than the icing you would buy um, on the counter, off the counter, in the aisle, whatever it's called. Anyways, <laughs> you can go to the bakery and you can buy a tub of icing and they weigh it by the pound. I think it was like a dollar something a pound, but I love the whipped icing. That's our favorite in our family. So that's what I did and it made it so much easier for decorating and I got more icing that way. So next time you make a cake, go to your bakery in the Kroger bakery section and ask them about buying some icing. So this is when you add the main layer of icing to the cake and as you can see it looks like a lot of icing and that's because it is but again keep in mind you start off with that crumb coat first and this is what will allow you to not have any crumbs in the icing for the cake and honestly I don't mind that much icing because I love icing that's my favorite part on the cake I know some people don't like it but for me I love the icing and again I love this whipped icing it's my favorite and so being able to pile a ton of the whipped icing on the cake doesn't really bother me but it makes it a lot easier when you're decorating too so I'm using the longer spatula to kind of smooth it out and it would be helpful if I had my lazy Susan to set this on for spinning but when I was doing this I couldn't find it but of course, when I was cleaning up the kitchen and I was done with the cake, I found it because that's how it goes. So I took these sprinkles and I mixed two different like textures and colors to kind of give it that rainbow look. And I just poured them all along the sides of the cake because I wanted to have like that colorful, just rainbow look to it. And plus, like I said, that was another reason that it didn't really matter that it wasn't smooth because I covered it in sprinkles anyways. And then um, on the top of the cake, I did four different colors to look like kind of dollops of paint. And I just did bright colors. Um, I didn't really want to do the primary colors because her favorite color is pink. And so I didn't incorporate a lot of reds. So I found these food colorings from Walmart. And then the one tube was purple icing from Walmart that was just already purple. I didn't have to color that one. And then the rest of it, I just used the leftover icing from Kroger and made the colors and then put the tops on it. And then I finished it off with the cake topper. But all in all, I think it turned out super cute. It was definitely a hit at the party.
So not only did I make the cake for her party, but I also made some sugar cookies. And I always make sugar cookies for the parties and any kind of like events that we have because I just feel like it's a fun way to kind of personalize your parties and your events. Um, and I even make them and send them to school for the kids whenever they're having certain types of, you know, events and parties going on. And they're just fun to me. So I buy the package mix from Walmart or Kroger. And then I add flour to it and it makes these perfect cutout cookies. I got my cookie cutters from Amazon, which they are also linked in the description of this video. And for her party this year, I did color palettes and paint brushes since we're doing the paint theme. They turned out super cute. This is one thing that I love doing. I love the cookies so much and they're honestly not as hard as you would think. So I'm gonna show you too the icing that I used. The icing is in like the squeeze pouches from Walmart or Kroger. And I love it because they come in a variety of colors and for the most part, you can accomplish whatever you're going for from the pre-made colors. But if you need to mix a certain color, you can just squeeze it out and then mix it in a bowl and put it in another baggie. But these cookie icings, they taste amazing, number one. But then number two, they set up to the perfect consistency. So I love when I make these cookies because like I said, I can customize them how they want. They turn out great and they also taste amazing. So I actually found a tube of chocolate icing. I didn't have to mix brown icing for the paintbrush stems. But then for the color palettes, I just used the remaining icing from the top of the cake to add the colors to these. So it was super easy, but they turned out good. And I just can't even stop talking about how good they taste. Like, I think this is one of my favorite desserts at the parties are these cookies. And it's definitely a hit with the kids. They love them. So this was the actual setup on the day of the party. I also did cupcakes and added these little cupcake toppers, which I thought were so cute as well. They were just little additions to the paint theme party. And then of course I made these little chocolate covered pretzels, which I'll show you in the next slide how those turned out. And then the cake, I love decorating. I love setting up the food to where it looks, you know, so intentional and thought through. And again, like for me, the decorating is not just with the hanging decorations, but also in the details of the food. So anytime that I can do a party and do party planning like this, I have a ball with it and I just enjoy all the little details. And it's, I mean, it makes it all worth it in the end when you see your child happy and how much they enjoy the birthday party. So each child got their own little canvas and apron and brushes and a color palette and they were able to paint whatever they wanted and then when they got done painting we had like a water slide for them to get in and play and kind of wash it all off but all in all I think the party turned out to be a big hit um, my daughter had so much fun I still can't believe that she's five they grow up way too fast but I really am so glad that I was able to share with y'all all of the things that I did for this party and I hope that it inspired you for your party and gave you some good ideas and i hope that you will subscribe and click the like leave me a comment and let me know if there's anything in particular that you liked the most in this video or if you have any other ideas for the other viewers um, next week i plan to be back on my regular posting schedule for uploads on tuesday so don't forget to subscribe and be on the lookout for that but until next time thanks so much bye guys